And now, if you're still with us, on to the dinosaur of the day, Hesperonus, which was a request from Lanosaur via our Patreon and Discord. And as a quick reminder, that's one of the perks of being a patron is you can request dinosaurs. So thank you. Hesperonus was a Mesozoic avialan that lived in the late Cretaceous and what is now Kansas in the U.S., as well as Canada and Russia. It was penguin-like. It was basically a large bird. It was about 5.9 feet or 1.8 meters long, but it did not have wings. Instead, it had strong hind limbs that it used to swim. You could also say that it was about six feet tall (laughs) because of its penguin likeness. True. Compared to most dinosaurs, which really are long when they're standing. True. (laughs) Hesperonus' toes were lobed, not webbed, so they were kind of flattened and that was good for swimming. So again, didn't fly, but it was great at diving and swimming. Its feet probably came out to its sides near the tail, which means that its legs couldn't go under the body to stand, and so they probably pushed themselves on their bellies on land, like seals. Oh, so maybe it didn't stand upright. Yeah, but if it did, it probably looked like a penguin. Hesperonus was probably good at foot propelling to dive, and then not great on walking on land. It was probably only on land for breeding and laying eggs. Hesperonus is similar to Gavia immer, the common loon, which is an extant animal, and it probably moved similarly on land and in water. It had a flattened tail, which may have helped it change direction and go deeper or back towards the surface when underwater. Hesperonus had a long neck and teeth and a beak. The beak was good for catching fish, and it probably used the beak to hold on to prey. The teeth were in the entire lower jaw and the back of the upper jaw. Their palate, the roof of the mouth, had small pits that could lock the lower teeth into place when the jaws were closed. In 1952, Joseph Gregory found that Hesperornis teeth were not in sockets like dinosaurs, but had a longitudinal groove that ran down the beak, similar to mosasaurs. Similarities in mosasaur lower jaws may show that Hesperornis could swallow large, slippery prey. It probably ate fish. Hesperornis lived in subtropical to tropical waters in a marine habitat. However, some of the younger species may have lived in freshwater deposits, so they may have moved, at least to some extent, away from saltwater. In 2016, David Burnham, Bryce Rothschild, and others studied a leg bone that was found in South Dakota in the 1960s and found that the Hesperonis bone had bite marks from a plesiosaur. They compared tooth marks of a juvenile plesiosaur and it matched the bite marks to within a millimeter. There were signs of infection based on the roughness of the bone, so Hesperonis probably survived the attack. Burnham and Rothschild found that the plesiosaur came from the side of Hesperonis based on the orientation of the bite and also found it probably fit the whole leg in its mouth. This shows that plesiosaurs may have been opportunistic predators instead of always going after small prey. Hesperonis fossils have been found from Arkansas to the Arctic, which is around where the western interior seaway was. And that means Hesperonis may have lived in cool and warm temperatures in the Arctic, or it may have migrated. In 2014, Laura Wilson and Karen Shin looked at the internal bone structure of Hesperonis fossils and of modern-day penguins, including gentoo penguins, which do not migrate for winter, and Adelian chinstrap penguins, which do migrate. They looked for lines of arrested growth, lags, that would have slowed or stopped to respond to stressful events such as Arctic winters or migrations. They didn't find any lags in Hesperonis, but saw that Hesperonis grew to adult size quickly. Modern penguins don't have any signs of Arctic winters or migration stress either. The penguins grow in about a year, so that's why there are no lags. They grow too fast. With Hesperonis, there are several possible reasons for no lags. They were adult-sized quickly, so the stresses associated with migrating or overwintering did not appear in their bone microstructure. Their bones may not be easily molded, and therefore these patterns were not recorded. Or the Arctic climate was not that bad, though it could get below freezing, it was warmer than it is today. The Gentoo penguins grow even faster than the other penguins and Hesperonis, possibly because they need to get to adult size before the winter comes, since they don't migrate. Wilson and Chin said that penguins need to be studied more, which may help answer more questions about Hesperonis. The type species is Hesperonis regalis, and the name means regal western bird. It was discovered by Othniel Charles Marsh in 1871 during his second expedition out west in Kansas with 10 students. He thought it was a diving species. He didn't find the head at the time. In 1872, Marsh went back to Kansas with four students. One of them, Thomas Russell, found a nearly complete skeleton with part of the head with teeth. 
This and Benjamin Mudge's discovery of ichthyornis led to Marsh writing in an 1873 paper, quote, The fortunate discovery of these interesting fossils does much to break down the old distinction between birds and reptiles. Hesperonis was part of the kind of pre-bone wars. Some Hesperonis fossils were accidentally sent to Cope and Marsh accused Cope of stealing them, which we went into in great detail <laughs> earlier. Dozens of Hesperonis regalis specimens have been found. Marsh published an illustrated monograph of Hesperonis in 1897 based on many specimens. There are nine species. Some of the species are only known from a single bone or a few bones, but they're considered different species because they were found in different strata or different locations. Marsh named Hesperonis crassipes in 1876. Originally, it was named Lestornis crassipes, based on an incomplete skeleton with teeth and parts of the skull. Hesperonis crassipes was larger than Hesperonis regalis. It had five ribs, Hesperonis regalis had four, and it had slightly different looking bones in the breastbone and lower leg. Marsh named another species Hesperonis gracilis. Another species, Hesperonis altus, was found in Montana in the Judith River Formation. They found a partial lower leg. Marsh originally classified it as Coniornis because he thought Hesperonis only lived in Kansas, but others disagreed and now refer to it as Hesperonis altus. In 1915, Schufelt named another species based on one dorsal vertebra and it being smaller than Hesperonis altus. Nesov and Yarka found another Hesperornis in Russia near Volgograd in 1993. More specimens have been referred to it. It's named Hesperornis rossicus, and it's a different size from the other ones, 4.6 feet or 1.4 meter long. Martin and Lim named four more new species in 2002 based on fossils that had not yet been studied. This includes Hesperornis mengeli and Hesperornis macdonaldi, smaller ones. Also Hesperornis bairdi and Hesperornis chowai. These are from South Dakota and Alberta, Canada. You can see Hesperornis in an exhibition dedicated to Marsh that's coming to the Yale Science Building to honor him as an early important Yale scientist. You can also see Hesperornis in the game Ark Survival Evolved. For those of you who listen to our Dinosaur of the Day segment and you like it, please consider becoming a patron. We take new Dinosaur of the Day requests from our patrons and offer a bunch of other perks as well. So check out our page at patreon.com slash or click the link on the left.